everyone, it's Kelvin, and once again, I'm back at you with another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So for today, I've got a really simple, loose, abstract B illustration that I want to show you uh, my workflow on. And this is a really easy illustration, uh, totally suitable for beginners, but even if you're a pretty experienced painter, I think you'll enjoy watching this process. So to get the watercolor effect, I'm using the regular watercolor brush kit, and then the St. Petersburg paper texture. But the main reason I'm using that texture and not any of the other ones is just because it looks better on the camera. I think this illustration is also very suitable for the regular paper texture as well. So I've already got a sketch pasted in here and you guys can have this for free. I'll put a download link in the description. I've just pasted it in there as the very top layer. Then I've set it to multiply and then just lowered the transparency just to a point where I can see it, but it doesn't stand out too much. And to start painting, I'll just select a blank layer underneath the paper texture and I'll grab the abstract round brush and then a nice kind of medium yellow color. Uh, not something too saturated, just something in the middle I think will uh, do well. And I'll just fill in some of these yellow segments here uh, using a variety of pressures because this is a pretty abstract illustration and uh, I think it looks nice when I do it that way. Now after that, I'm gonna go over it again with the same yellow. And when I layer it, it's gonna make it a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna use that to give this just a little bit of kind of basic shading here. There we go, that looks really good. Next, I'm gonna do the black parts of the body here. So I'm gonna grab a pretty bluish black color. I think something like that will look all right. If that's good enough, maybe I'll use it at a slightly larger size and I'll just loosely fill out the black portions here. After that, I'm just gonna go over it again, just like I did with the yellow to create some kind of uh, darker shades in there. And then I'll carefully zoom in and uh, do the leg details like this. Now with the body and the legs all done, I can grab the water blender brush here at the bottom. And at maybe around 10, 20%, uh, I'm just gonna create some interesting blending. And no tricks to this, I just wanna create this kind of very loose, kind of wet on wet watercolor effect. There we go, that looks really good. It looks like I did forget to do the antenna, so I'll do those real quick. I'll just grab the uh, abstract round brush again, and I think it'll be easier to do those at a pretty small size. And I'll just carefully kind of pencil those in. So the body of the bee is almost done, but before I move on and do the wings, I wanna add a little bit of shading. So I'm gonna open the layers panel and I'm gonna switch off the sketch just so this is easier to see. Then I'm gonna make sure I have the body of the bee selected here. Next, I'll grab the selection tool, set it to freehand, and I'll start by doing the shadows. So I'll make a selection down here where I want those shadows to be just like this. I'll feather it out a little bit. I'm gonna go to hue, saturation, and brightness for the layer, and I'll start by darkening it and it's a little bit hard to do cooler shadows when we're dealing with yellow. Yellow is a very sensitive color and technically we should go towards green. That's sort of the closest cool color, but I don't like that color combination. So instead, I think I'll shift this a little bit towards orange and then I'll desaturate it. And I think that'll give us a cool, uh, dark enough kind of shadow just to work for this particular project. Next for the highlights, I'm gonna do a, uh, a hard highlight that means I'm not gonna use the feathering to blur the edge of the selection. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool for that, set it to freehand, and I'll just make a random selection around about the area where I want the highlight to be. But I am paying a little bit of attention to the segments in the body. Now I won't feather it. I'll just go straight to the curves this time. Now I prefer the curves for brightening things because it does it in a much more even way uh, than the brightness slider. So to brighten it with the curves, I'm just gonna grab the bottom node and then slide that up. And that just brightens it in a really nice kind of even fashion. There we go, we'll deselect it. So that's pretty much it for the body of the bee. We've got some very soft, uh, not really cool shadows, but they're cool enough. Uh, and then we have a nice hard highlight there on the top. Now for the wings, I'll turn the sketch back on for that. And I'm gonna add another layer because I'm gonna make a cool adjustment to the wings later on. So it's really important that we make those on a layer above the rest of the illustration. Brush-wise, I'm still gonna use the abstract round. I'm just gonna choose a very kind of light blue color, a grayish blue color like that. And I'll do both wings at the same time here. 
So I'm going to set this brush uh, wide enough so that I can basically fill out each of these kind of cells in the wings like this. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'll do the other one. Next, I'm going to select a lighter version of that gray. It's almost white, but not quite. And just along the edges of the wings, I'm going to do some random shapes like that. It looks like I can't really see it, so I do need to go even lighter yet. There we go. Yeah, that's just light enough. Do a couple of highlights along the edges. And to finish it up, I'm going to select a darker version and just add some details on some of these kind of veins, just very, very lightly, uh, very, very gently like that. Now, if you notice, these wings are definitely too dark, but I've done that on purpose. It's much easier to paint something dark so you can get the texture and the brush strokes uh, correct, and then later on you can lighten it. So I'm gonna lighten it using the curves, but let me turn off the sketch first, just so we can see this clearly. Now, one thing about the wings that I can see right away is I've gone way beyond the sketch in a couple of areas. So before I lighten it, I'm gonna grab the eraser brush and just kind of clean up the edges here where they went a little bit crazy. There we go, that looks much better. Now to lighten these, I'm gonna to go to the curves tool here for the layer, and I'm just gonna raise the bottom node just until these seem like they're light enough that they kind of match the rest of the illustration. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can play around with the curves tool and add a couple of different nodes. And these will let you get some really interesting kind of high contrast effects like this. Now what I'm doing here, there's no technique here. I'm just kind of randomly messing around with these nodes uh, until I just get a look that I kind of like. There we go, that looks really good. Let's deselect this. Uh, they look good, maybe they're a little bit too saturated. So I think I'm gonna go to the uh, hue saturation and brightness and just desaturate them a little bit. There we go, that's better. Next, I'm gonna merge the wings together with the body of the bee. So I'll open the layers panel and just pinch those two layers together. Now the reason I did that is because I wanna blend them uh, very, very lightly. So I'm gonna grab the water blender brush and add a pretty small size, maybe like 10%, just something that I can fit in there. I'm just gonna go in there and kind of blend this just a little bit. And next, kind of as an optional step, uh, you can go in there, maybe at a little bit of a larger size, and blend the wings just a little bit, but I wouldn't get too carried away with it. These aren't the main feature here, so you can do these any way you want and it will look good, as long as the body of the bee is kind of uh, done well. And there we go, this one is all done. And here's what it looks like when I print it out. So this illustration is definitely a very simple one. Uh, hopefully the technique is easy to follow, especially if you're just starting out with digital watercolor. Now, even if you're pretty advanced with painting, I do recommend giving illustrations like this a try once in a while, especially if you feel stuck. Recently, I've felt like I just can't paint anything that, that looks right. Like I just don't know what to paint. And I think this is a type of kind of a uh, writer's block for artists. So in order to get through those blocks, I'll just go back to basics and paint something that I know I can paint very well. Uh, something basic that I covered months ago, and it just helps build my confidence so I can paint again uh, and then kind of branch off into newer, more complicated painting subjects. And that pretty much wraps it up. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.